We can measure voltage changes as a wave of depolarization passes a certain point along the neuron. In this image, we follow the voltage changes along the first part of the neuron. At resting potential, the neuron is not conducting an impulse. Polarity exists. The distribution of ions results in a positive charge outside and a net negative charge inside, which accounts for the minus 65 millivolts resting potential. If a sufficient stimulus occurs, depolarization occurs. An action potential is a rapid change in polarity across the membrane of the neuron and results in a nerve impulse. If a stimulus causes the membrane to depolarize to a certain level, called the threshold, the action potential occurs. Sodium gates open first and sodium flows down its concentration gradient into the neuron. The influx of positive ions changes the membrane voltage from minus 65 millivolts, negative on the inside, to plus 40 millivolts, positive on the inside at its peak. During repolarization, sodium gates open and potassium moves out of the neuron along its concentration gradient. The sodium-potassium pump begins to re-establish resting potential in that part of the neuron. The refractory period is a short time period in which a neuron cannot respond to a stimulus and it occurs between waves of depolarization. In this state, the neuron is hyperpolarized and extra negative because they're both sodium and potassium ions outside the neuron. During this time, the membrane is recovering from the passage of the previous impulse. Sodium gates are unable to open. It is the time required for complete polarity to be re-established. This takes about one one-thousandth of a second. After the refractory period, resting potential is re-established until the next wave of depolarization.